Hooray for Hollywood, just a few miles east of Hollywood. But some of the pictures that you can see here in Indiana, here in central Indiana, for the next old week and a half or so, you might see them getting the big trophies in Hollywood come next year. The Heartland International Film Festival is back, and Jessica Chapman, Director of Marketing for the Film Festival, is here to talk about it. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Thanks it's for having us. Almost here. Yes, yeah. it's opening day. It's tomorrow, so we're so excited. We couldn't be more happy. We have 11 days of films and 115 films at our festival. That's Is that more than you had last year? It is a lot of films. Yeah, that yeah. is a ton of films. We have so many. And you know what? We actually decided to cut back a little bit this year mm. because we're going to do more screenings of each film. So we felt like we couldn't get them all in where, you know, we had people wanting to see them multiple times or invite their friends out. So now we have about two to three screenings of each film in our festival. How difficult is it to get a film approved to be shown at the Heartland yeah. Film Festival? We get over about a thousand submissions. So we've really narrowed it down to the best of the best films for this festival. And it takes a process about like four times of watching it with different groups before it makes it to this final stage. And, and some, uh, we'll talk about the Hoosier connection to a lot of these films as well. But again, this is a chance for people to see independent films. Mm -hmm. These are not usually big budget. They, but these are a lot of films that are going to get a lot of attention mm -hmm. come awards time. Yeah, we have 20 award contending films that are, these are more of the bigger studio type films where you're getting preview looks before, you know, anyone else in the world is really getting the chance to see them. And those are those ones that you're going to see some really big names behind it. We have My Policeman with Harry Styles, which is about forbidden love. We have um, Empire of Light with Olivia Coleman, and that takes place at this beautiful old art cinema. And we have two films actually with Sadie Sink, and we have a lot of Stranger Things fans out there. So that's with Dear Zoe, as well as The Whale, which is our closing night film, and that is already sold out. And so, that's unfortunate because Brendan Fraser, that's his big, yes. uh, I don't want to call it a comeback. I feel weird calling it a comeback yeah. for Brendan Fraser, but he's been kind of out of the spotlight for a while, and now he's getting rave reviews for yeah. The Whale. Yeah, it's been called the uh, Renaissance yeah, right now, the, 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 the coming back did, of Did you come him up with that marketing director? No, I didn't. Okay, that's no. Someone did, though. It's <laughs> kind of, it's true, though. It's a really powerful, incredible yeah. film. It's sold out to over 530 people at our festival, so there is a big, you know, demand for that type of film. And we also, though, will have other screenings that sell out. So I really encourage you to purchase your tickets now. Yeah, that's why you should get your tickets early, because you think you'll have a chance to at the last minute. Mm -hmm. And with The Whale, at least, uh, you won't. Now, speaking of last minute, as we air this, tomorrow night, opening night, uh, the big opening screening is one that I knew was coming on Apple TV, but I forgot that it was premiering here. And that yeah. is this fantastic new documentary on Louis Armstrong. Yeah, so this is just this really beautiful documentary and we're so excited to be able to showcase it here first. Mm -hmm. Again, you're going to be able to see it about a month before, you know, you can watch on TV so you can tell your friends you saw you saw something before them, but we're going to have this really cool evening. We have a 20 foot red foot 20 foot red carpet that you can take photos on and then that we have a live performance actually of all of his greatest hits that'll be playing as people enter. And then we also have really cool water bottles that we're going to give out. So it's just going to be a really cool celebratory event starting out the festival. It's called Louis Armstrong's Black and Blues. Check it out. And what's the Indiana connection, you ask? April 6, 1923, Jeanette Records, Richmond, Indiana. That's where Louis Armstrong, as a member of King Oliver's Creole Jazz Band, recorded a cornet solo, played the cornet before he uh, became famous on the trumpet, and the rest is history. That was his yeah. star turn, happened here in Indiana. Yeah, exactly. So that's yeah, we're excited movie. to have that, that Hoosier connection, along with Brendan Fraser, was actually born in Indianapolis. Yes. So we have our, our opening and closing night, have those Indianapolis connections. And in between, you've got a lot of Indiana spotlight films that uh, that spotlight Indiana, yeah. feature Hoosier filmmakers, stuff like that too. Yeah, so we have 11 Indiana spotlight films and they will each have multiple screens throughout the festival and many of which will have filmmakers attending for Q and A's, but this is just a really cool opportunity to see these like filmmakers who, you know, they could be your next door neighbor. Sometimes you see stories that you've never heard about. Sometimes you see stories that, you know, are about the people that you know and love already. So it's just a really cool, to see Indianapolis captured on film. 
And one of those films is State of the Unity, which talks about this couple that is a, in a band together. And they just decided to travel to all 50 states and sing about bringing people together. And that was just their mission was just to really like, you know, bring people together through music and just change their perspective and open them up to talking to new people. So it's pretty cool to see Hoosiers going out there and just trying to make the world a better place. And trying to see, I saw the trailer for that movie because you sent it to me and it, trying to bring people together, especially now yeah, when exactly. it's so difficult to bring everybody exactly. together. So yeah. that, that is a fascinating uh, concept. You also, if you're a baseball fan, I know we're getting late in baseball season. The playoffs are about to happen, but you have a triple play, as you put it, of yes. baseball themed movies, including one we featured here on WRTV already. Brad Brown did a great piece on a, a, a film about the life of Hoosier pitcher Carl Erskine. Yeah, so we have three baseball movies all playing at Newfields this Saturday and we have the best we've got, the Carl Erskine story. And that's just a really beautiful story about Carl Erskine and what he did through his baseball career, but also just in his life for the community and for Special Olympics Indiana and Special Olympics as a whole. So some people may know the back end story of that, but it does a really good job of just covering his whole life. And then right after that, we have the world premiere of Rally Caps, which is a really sweet story about um, this little boy who is just really struggling after the loss of his dad and going through an injury, but he's in a baseball camp and it's just this really, really cute kind of summer baseball film. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we have, if you're a Yogi Berra fan, we have a film all about him and his yogiisms, as we like to call them. That's a documentary and we, the filmmaker will be attending. So. Um, we have, you know, filmmakers, 150 of them attending and they're here for Q and A's and that's really the kind of the best part of the magic right. of the festival is getting to hear from those filmmakers, get a little bit of the background of each of the stories and, and to ask those questions. And you get to see these people, you know, before perhaps they win an Oscar or a Golden Globe mm -hmm. uh, next year. So 115 plus films. You got five venues from the Can Can all the way down to the historic Art Craft Theater. Have yes. you been to the Art Craft Theater before? Yes, it's beautiful. It's I mean, and this is their 100th anniversary. Yes, we, we did something on that a, a little bit ago. It's just a fabulous place to see a movie. Yeah. yeah, it's incredible. And we really try to pair some cool films with it that makes sense for that venue. We have a film all about pinball and just some, <laughs> and another film all about Pez. So just some like fun kind of throwback films yeah. are, are going to be played there. Now you're doing some virtual offerings too. So there, there are some of these films that you'll be able to buy and watch from home, mm -hmm. but you're, you're not doing as, as many of those as you are the in-person screenings yeah, at the theaters. Yeah, so many of them will be available virtually. There will be some films that are only available in person, especially some of those like bigger name films. Those will only have one in-person screening. All right, so get out to the theater and, and go see a movie and go see some great movies at the Heartland International Film Festival, heartlandfilm.org. Heartlandfilmfestival.org. Heartlandfilmfestival.org. Yep. Heartland We've got it at wrtv.com as well. Check them out and check out some great movies October 6th through the 16th. Jessica Chapman, thank you. Appreciate thank it. Thank you.